Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another installment of our Career Video Library series uh, with Nevada State College Career Services. My name is Zach. I am the Coordinator of Employer Relations uh, with Career Services at Nevada State. I am joined today by Nancy, and she's going to talk a little bit about the DO program at Toro University, Nevada. So I will go ahead and just let her introduce herself, and we will jump right into it. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Nancy Long, pronouns she, her, hers. Um, I am the uh, Admissions and Recruitment Program Manager for the DO program at Torrey University of Nevada. Um, and I've been at Torrey University of Nevada um, just about three years now. Uh, pleasure to be here today. Um, I got a little bit about myself. Um, I um, am originally from Los Angeles, but I consider myself a Las Vegas native now. I've been here for quite some time, about 15 years. Um, and I, I love it here. Uh, this is home to me. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, so you. can you tell us, can you tell us a little bit about Toro University of Nevada and the mission of the institution? Yeah, so Toro University of Nevada, we're actually part of a larger system, Toro College and University Systems. Uh, our sister campus is Toro, California and Toro, New York. Now, our campus itself, uh, we were founded in 2004, really to address the critical needs of healthcare and education. Um, now, with Clark County School District being the fourth or fifth largest school district in the nation, at that time, uh, there was a shortage of educators. Um, and if you are from here, you may know that um, there are some challenges um, to even see a physician. And so at that time, we really found it to fill that void. Um, it is a private nonprofit uh, institution and, and it is a Jewish sponsored institution, uh, which means uh, we do observe uh, uh, additional Jewish holidays, which could be conducive for students who are currently practicing that faith. They don't have to take additional time off. Um, and a majority of our Jewish holidays do land um, in September and October uh, every year. Now, um, our mission statement is to provide quality education programs uh, in the fields of healthcare and education in concert with the Judaic commitment to uh, social justice, uh, intellectual pursuit, and service to humanity. Um, you know, for this, this is just how we pretty much carry ourselves and how we conduct our business. But at the end of the day, you know, wherever you choose for your medical education, uh, we just hope that you carry these tenets with you. Awesome, thank you. So can you talk about the DO program at Toro University of Nevada and about what makes it unique? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, the pro DO program um, is actually the largest, um, so largest medical school in the state. And also we pride ourselves in being the only DO program um, in Nevada. Now, when I say largest medical uh, school, maybe not in terms of you know, acreage or land size, but in terms of class size, we are the largest. Now, it is a four-year program, so you'll, you'll spend two years in didact didactive years, and then you'll spend uh, additional two years uh, for your clinical education. Um, I'd say we have a strong commitment to student success. Um, so some prime examples, we actually have an open door policy uh, where students can seek faculty for any questions or additional help, um, which I think that it's really important that faculty members are, ac are accessible um, to our students. Now, I also want to add that our students' voice matters. They actually have the opportunity to sit on various committees uh, on campus. Um, so any questions, um, comments, or concerns, those are taken to the executive leadership for consideration. Uh, it is also very hands-on. So even starting as early as year one, our students will have the opportunity to practice hands-on. Um, so whether that's through the gross anatomy lab, um, OMM lab, we even have what we call standardized patients. Uh, pretty much they are uh, skilled and trained actors. And you as a future physician, how would you treat your patient? So going back to measuring uh, patient uh, bedside manners, and preparing you for the um, uh, complex level uh, two PE portion of um, the boards. This year, we also recently incorporated um, ultrasound, ultrasound training into the curriculum. So that is also new. Uh, you can also do all of your rotations here in the Las Vegas Valley, which is, just, is really nice. You don't have to make additional living arrangements or um, you know, have other expenses um, during year, uh, year three um, in the program. 
I also want to mention that we've had 100% uh, match placement uh, rate the last two years. Um, now, we don't have that uh, information for this year's uh, match yet, but I can anticipate that it will be close to that uh, given um, the data from the last two years. And then um, I do want to add that the last point is that um, uh, Georgia University of Nevada's uh, class, a deal class of 2021, was ranked number one in the country for complex level one pass rates. So, very exciting. Awesome, that's amazing. So for students who maybe don't know, can you talk about what the difference is between uh, a DO and an MD and what the benefits are uh, of becoming a DO? Absolutely. Uh, so a DO practices um, osteopathic medicine, um, as you may know, uh, which is more, it takes a more holistic approach to medicine. Now, um, osteopathic medicine is still fairly new. I know when I first started at Toro, I had no idea uh, what a DO does. Um, so it's just so familiar with seeing um, an MD uh, after a you know, physician's uh, signature. But uh, osteopathic medicine was founded in the late 1800s by Dr. Andrew Still, and it essentially focuses on a person as a whole. So, right, your mind, body, and, and spirit. Um, it also uh, believes that you know our human bodies has an innate ability to heal itself. I um, mean, along with that, it also focuses on preventative care. Um, now, I will say that. Um, uh, DOs also receive the same medical training as MDs. Um, in addition to that, they also receive 200 plus hours of um, OMM training. They can also practice the full scope of medicine in case you're wondering, so any type of specialty um, in the US. Uh, now, the, an MD, they, it's tr the traditional um, type of medicine, um, they focuses more on the treatment of disease uh, through medications. Um, and then the benefit I say with, uh, with being a DO is that the profession is continuing to grow. Um, as a matter of fact, in the past decade, about 63%. Wow, that's great. Um, yeah. So what are the admissions requirements uh, for the DO program at Toro University of Nevada? Um, so at this time, I do ask that I can share my screen so I can pull that information up. All right. Okay. All righty, Zach, you can give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Perfect. Now, I won't go through every single detail with the admission requirements, um, but I do want to touch on a few important points. Now, I'm, um, this is the uh, admission requirements page for the DO program specific specifically, and I encourage you, you know, as you're doing research, um, as you're navigating our pages, to bookmark this page as well as the most updated um, admission requirements information will be on, on this website. I'm going to scroll down. Now, um, all applicants who are interested in applying must go through our centralized application system, which is um, ACOMAS. We don't take direct applications um, through, through the um, uh, TORO application. Um, so, uh, applicants can only submit once they are invited to submit a uh, supplemental application. Uh, now, the MCAT is required. Uh, for um, admissions. Um, a 500 is the minimum MCAP score um, for the class matriculating. Now this information is for this cycle, but for the class matriculating in um, August 2022, the, uh, the last MCAT score we can take is gonna, going to be uh, January 2022, uh, with June 2019 would be the last, uh, the scores that we can go back to. Again, keep in mind, this is for this cycle. Um, that information will change uh, the following year. Like I mentioned, I won't go through every single um, course requirements, but there are um, you know, a, a few course requirements that I recommend you um, looking into to make sure you've met all the requirements. <laughs> And if you have any questions on meeting the prerequisites or what courses you need to take, I do encourage you um, to uh, meet with your pre-health advisor as they specialize on helping students get to the next, um, next, your next program of choice. 
I do want to go over letter of recommendations. Um, and, you know, if you haven't already, start establishing relationships with um, faculty members or a mentor you have in your life. And uh, because, you know, when you start applying to medical school, those are going to be, come in handy when they are able to write a strong letter for you. We do require two letters from a science professor, which is a natural science professor. Um, and then we do require one letter um, from a physician, either a DO or MD. Now, we do prefer a DO, but if you have an MD that can strongly advocate for you, um, go ahead and have an uh, have MD write it for you. Um, and then I cannot stress this enough with the letters of recommendations. Be sure you are confident that they can strongly advocate for you. Um, we have this in the past when you are not sure and you ask your letter writers to write for you. Um, believe it or not, um, we've uh, received information um, that they didn't know. So again, just make sure that you are confident that they can strongly vouch for you. We do include COVID-19 FAQs in here, uh, especially for this cycle. Um, so I encourage you to look through the, uh, the questions in case you do have um, some questions regarding um, COVID-19. I want to stop my screen share. I believe that's the next question you are going to ask me about the deadlines. Yes. So when do applications open and when are uh, when is the deadline to apply? Yes. So for the um, cycle, so for the 2021-2022 application cycle, um, applications um, open or ACOMAS opens on May 4th. Um, so I encourage you to apply early. Uh, just because it, it allows you leeway, it gives you that extra time in case you have a letter missing, um, in case you have any other outstanding materials in your application that gives you extra time. So apply early um, if you can. Um, also keep in mind, uh, it takes anywhere from four to six weeks for liaison to verify your application. So that's something to keep in mind as well as you prepare your documents and, um, and submit it to ACOMAS. Um, so that opens on May 4th. The, the primary application deadline um, is going to be uh, May, or not May, excuse me, March 15th, 2022, with the supplemental application uh, a month later, which is April 15th, 2022. Okay, great. So even though you do have plenty of time, I want to stress what she said about <laughs> applying early, you know, get your materials ready now because it's just going to make it a lot easier on yourself. Um, if you're doing it, you know, a few weeks out from the deadline, you're going to be stressing, um, you're going to be panicking, it's not going to be a fun time, um, and it'll just be good peace of mind for you to have it done a lot sooner than that. Um, I did. I, I also wanted to add, I didn't add this earlier, but I also wanted to add that we do operate on a rolling admissions basis, so that means that we review applications as we receive them. Um, and so that's why I cannot stress enough to apply as early as possible uh, because we do operate on a rolling admissions basis. Right. So the ones that you see earlier, you're going to be reviewing earlier. And so, yes. yeah, so it gives you a little bit of a, you know, a head start a little bit on people who are applying at the last minute. So mm -hmm. another good thing to remember. All right. So um, the question now for the question that I like to ask everybody uh, at the end here, which is uh, what is a piece of career or life advice that you wish someone had given you when you were a student? Gosh, I, you know, I look back like it's so long ago, um, but you live and you learn, right? Um, I think for me, the biggest thing is just know that there are resources out there and don't be afraid to, to, to seek out those resor resources. Um, Nevada State College, it's, it's, a, it's a great college, by the way, I, um, I had the opportunity to, to intern there um, uh, at school, yes. Um, but don't be afraid to take advantage of the resources offered uh, to assist you as a student. And also, um, it's never too early to, sort of, to start doing a research, to look, start looking into uh, requirements for medical school. Um, you know, these are some of the requirements that we have um, at our university, but you want to be able to look at um, other requirements at other universities as well, because they're going to have, um, you know, slightly different ones um, at each, uh, each program. And then for me personally is um, find a mentor. Uh, I'd say it, it was a little bit challenging for me. I was a first generation uh, college student. And um, I did had some difficulty, uh, you know, navigating college, but in the end, I 
I made it through successfully, but um, you know, wherever you are in your life, um, start, to, start early to find a mentor um, to be able to, to assist you um, along the way. Absolutely. And I love your first piece of advice um, because we're one of those resources to you, you know, at the Career Services Center. We're here to help you and it's free to you as a student. You know, you can meet with us, uh, have your resume looked at for people who are experts who are trained in this stuff. And I love that piece of advice because, I mean, that's what I would say too. That would be the first thing I would say. Because when I was an undergrad student, I did not go, I did not look out for any resources at all. I, I did not um, mm -hmm. utilize those things that were available to me. And then when I graduated, I had no idea what to do. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and had I gone to the Career Center or even academic advice, I never even saw an advisor. Um, so please look for those resources. We're here to help you. We want to help you. It's, it's, it's our job. It's fun. For Absolutely. <laughs> So, um, yeah, definitely. So uh, if students have additional questions and they want to reach out to you, how can they do that? Yeah, so the best way I'd say is usually just through email, uh, and that will be directly on the website, which I had shared earlier um, uh, under the admissions uh, requirements for the DO program. So the best way is just uh, through email. Uh, we are working remotely. Uh, I don't know what that is going to look in the future, but the best way is through email. Otherwise, if you uh, call, it will just go to our office phone and it will go directly to a voicemail, which we get. But yes, usually uh, email is the best way. And if they have any questions, we are also available uh, via Zoom um, to meet as well. Absolutely. And all of that contact information will be listed underneath this video. I will have all the, the emails, the links to the website, all of those things. So please look out for that. Um, also, students, uh, feel free to make an appointment with us at Career Services at Calendly.com slash NSC Career. Um, if you have any questions about applying to grad school, if you need help with any of those materials, if you want to get your, you know, essays looked at, anything like that, we are here for you. Um, so yeah, please reach out to us. So uh, Nancy, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It's a lot of great information for our students. Um, and thank you students for checking out this, this video. And please check out some of our other videos on the Career Video Library. Um, so thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you, Zach. It was a pleasure to be here today and, and go over um, some of the questions we all have and um, do not hesitate to reach out to me anytime. Yes, please, please reach out. Don't be afraid. She wants to hear from you. <laughs> yes. All right. Take care, Nancy. Take care.